the Grey Hat Beard podcast. Hello and welcome to Grey Hat Beard show 46 part two. If you haven't listened to part one, go back and listen to last week's show where we talked all about the latest news, things that have come out from Ignite, some nice new uh, cheap laptops for schools, uh, some great blog posts from um, Sarah Fenner. And hopefully you've heard about the festive tech calendar and signed up to many of the events there. In part two, though, we're ignoring news and we're going to be talking about Azure DevOps and actually specifically we're going to go into why you should use it for planning some of your stuff because you may in the last show we talked a lot about the uh, the new board capability that's coming to um sharepoint lists and you can track your things there you can track things in planner you can even have an excel sheet to spread uh, to uh, keep track of things don't do that please um But Gary is going to try and convince us why we should be looking at Azure boards within Azure DevOps. So, Gary, over to you. Right, Okay. so here we go. (laughs) Here's the pitch. Um, Okay. so like like you talked about the the boards, right? I'm a very visual person. I like to see things, you know, the work that I'm doing and it to be displayed out there like, you know, like many of us might use post-it notes. I don't know who to use post actual post-it notes, but you know, people who stick things I, around. I was it's, just looking to see if you still had those post-it notes behind you, but your your background's covering they, really nicely. They have actually gone and it <laughs> has caused a bit of a stir. People have always asked me, oh, where you where you post-it notes gone? I've done all the work, that's what it is. Uh, no, I wish. Um, <laughs> but, but it, it's it's that kind of thing, on. right? Yeah, you you've got the work there, but you're representing it in a in a different way. And I think, you know, uh, the Azure boards uh, for 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 planning your work. I really like that that visual. I like the way that you can have a card which has associated other tasks with it. So you know a perfect example of a user story, and that user story has description and acceptance criteria. But then you have uh, actual tasks that that make up the delivery of that story and they are associated and they have their their own elements but they're all grouped up nicely together and 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 from a board perspective you can see okay i can look at that story and i can see um this oh go on hand up up. already when i when i have my tasks i kind of put down on my post-it note and i say i've got to do this i've got to do this and and on planner i do the same thing but i put some dates against it now Gary, talk about boards. I'm kind of imagining that's like a, a big board that I put my post-it notes on. But you start talking about stories there. Um, now, I know project managers often tell a story to people about when things are going to complete. But what, what do you mean by that for anyone who isn't aware? Um, well, I guess, uh, you know, use a story from a, from an agile sense of being kind of like a, 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 a descriptive kind of requirement, if you like, of, you know, uh, I need to... Um, for for a particular person, I need to deliver something because they can then get get value. But I, I think it's, what it's you're saying three, is, it's those three key elements. It's it's the who, the what, and the why. It is why yeah. we do it's a story. There's a kind of defined format that that's often a good approach to that, that. Yeah. So in the agile sense, that's that's how I've come about it. But you're you're kind of right in the in sense it doesn't have to just be a story, right? It just has to be something that maybe groups other tasks together um in in some kind of hierarchical way um so well, you've, you've upset al now you've, you've said it's going to have to be a story it's like... no, not upset at all no I'm, i mean i always think about it as a tangible interaction for an end user you know thinking about it that way so that you're really describing you know if i put a button into an app what happens when i press that button so you, you're kind of thinking about it as rather than just putting the button in and I click on it and it does nothing, that's not tangible value that you're giving to a user. You want it to actually be, you know, what happens when you click that button? So you've got a story in terms of those actions and the results, the cause and effect, the who, well, why would I do it? Do I have permissions to see it? You know, you've got that kind of part in there. Uh, and then the why, what's the what's in it for me as a user? So. You're kind of thinking about it as delivering value and getting away from, you know, oh, right, can you just put a button on that page to do this? Oh, yeah, I put the button on and it doesn't do it. Oh, no, because there's all this other stuff that we have to build first. You know, So it's kind of thinking about that whole 
the whole piece of value that you're delivering to the user. And I, th I think that why is really important because it's you understand that kind of gives you a bit of context to it that when you're developing, you know, this button does that you may have interpreted that kind of what slightly wrongly or slightly differently to what the people are expecting by giving that why you're far more likely to kind of go right okay now i understand yeah and you know a good example of that would be i'm going to present some information so that a user can make a decision on something and click a button to do x or y based on what they see mm. so it's it's tying together rather than having discrete you know, OK, I just want this one piece of thing and it's it's going to do that thing over there. Hmm. It's tying it all together into a, a sensible, a sensible uh, piece of work that you can deliver and go, right, that's done. I can see that it's done because it, it goes all the way through that story. Yeah, you have that overarching story of which then it will describe, OK, here's my expected outcome. So it, once this story has been completed, this is what I should end up with, right? And it, it's not saying we need to do X, Y, and Z. It's the, uh, this is what I'm expecting, of which the tasks are, how do we get to that state? What are the things that we need to do to get there? Um, and then, you know, you would work through those individual tasks to that that particular outcome. But it, it, it's, it's nicely contained. Um, Going back to the, the boards analogy, you know, you can see, OK, that story has X number of tasks of which some are completed. We know uh, a particular state that it's in um, as well. Um, and when you represent things on boards, you have a nice visual flow left to right of the different states that it goes through in, in its kind of life cycle. And that might change dependent on your project your environment that you're working in, potentially different teams that you're working with. Um, and you know those boards are really nice and configurable where you can take this one card through its own little journey through your delivery life cycle and really visualize okay well you know where are we here is it is it has it gone to dev has it been tested has it actually been released to production you know have we shall got I, another um, team that, that looks at things i know not everyone but, is watching on video but shall i talking visual shall i show it to people yeah it and is we're, it, we're trying to talk you through a few if you are listening, uh, don't don't worry. We'll try and talk through as much as possible. But uh, for those who do have the visual side, then definitely. So uh, this is a uh, you know perfect example of some different states that are going through for people who can't see uh, the the actual screen. You've got you've got new on the left hand side, which is just a, a list of items that you know might need some work, some clarifications on there, but it's not actually active and being worked. It's going to move into a design um, stage. Um, it's going to move in develop and test and then finally it's done. What I really like about this is the conversations that it starts. So whilst you're, you're working on things and you're updating all, all of these uh, items as you're going through the work, what I really love about the boards is you can stop and you can look at it and then you should be able to gain a picture of the current status quite quickly. Um, like in this case, not much has been finished. No, exactly. Not much has been finished, but you can start to ask questions about the board and 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 where you're starting to think, you know, in your project. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, um, let's let's say how long has it taken an, a card to get from left to right? How long has a card stayed in a particular column, for, exa for example? That might be something that you want to track. And DevOps in the background is tracking all of that behind the scenes there's you know huge tracking of a history of anything that's that's happened to that particular item whether things have changed states have changed you know assignment to, to other people and um, one of the things that i love to do is to change the card so you know it's it's a visual we can change and configure the cards and display other bits of information that we think might be a, of use of which one of those is uh, last state change so then you can start to see, oh, this card's been sat in test for two weeks and it's still not done. That might so, be a problem. Sorry, that Gary, that last, check, that last state change, that was the date that the state change last. Yes. So, you're talking so about i.e. it moved from one from the column on the left to the column on the right, potentially. So yeah. I, think one of the, I think one of the things about the whole concept of using these cards and using columns to visually demonstrate what state they're in is it is that conversation starter but you can also see where things are blocked because they've been there 
for too long and people can say okay you know if, if you're using the cards and you're saying okay i'm going to take on that piece of work i'm going to take on that user story i'm going to develop that you can highlight that when you say well actually yesterday you know i ran into a problem with this can anybody help me so you can again you can use that visual marking to say yes there is a an issue with this i need some help which allows you to remove those blockers and you there's a whole psychology around around the moving of these as well you know i talk about it when i talk about tasks you know completing tasks you know when you move these into done you know there is a, there is a all right i don't need to do that anymore you know and done is quite a particular word in agile um but it means that you shouldn't have to go back and do anything else on it so therefore you can actually move on and do something else so there's a whole lot of things that you try to present here to make it more effective for a team to work together and to coordinate their activities and prioritize their activities as well in order to get all of the all of the work done that you need to get done so some some people be looking at this and going uh, so we've got a load of columns and we can move things between columns we can create a task with subtasks well, a kind of planner can do that and I can probably now do that with SharePoint lists. The the only thing, and I think you've touched on one really nice one, Gary, is you've got that full history and you've got relatively easy ways to kind of make use of that history, to make use of that data. You can connect it up with Power BI. Um, what other kind of advantages over SharePoint lists and planner do you, do you think we, we cover from there? I mean, the, the hierarchy of... Um let's say you know, work items uh that, that that's that's a huge thing um so you're able to you know to drill into a particular card and then see the the the, the child work items like i said with with the task that that kind of linkage that's a really powerful thing um especially for so when, reporting. when we're when we're talking about work items that's something that could be a, a user story as a work item a task a bug I yeah, know bug. those who yeah. look on the screen there was a bug on there or the kind of generic thing is a, is a work item that's what it's known as in as your yes. DevOps. And yeah so you can define links between those um from that all sorts of different links yeah and there's things that we've not talked about so um test cases for example so uh, a user story let's let's think about that so a user story could have tasks okay and that is your implementation that user story may also have test cases associated with it to verify the behavior that you've defined in your acceptance criteria as well and they're all grouped together so that you can just see in that one comp component the work that was needed to be done to actually deliver it if it's code you'd go even one further you could actually link that to your code commits or pull requests of like you know this was the actual work that that was done and then go even further and go okay when that work was done we actually ran these tests and these are the tests that we've got against this particular uh, story and these passed as well or they failed and which you get that can be manual or automated for those tests uh, that can be yeah it can be manual or automated and then if you want to take it the next step further you can then push that story further on in its journey where you might then have continuous deployment and continuous deployment would pick that up and you could reference your deployments with those work items that you've deployed and what you end up with is an end-to-end -end picture of that one story all of the things that were done to deliver it all of the tasks that were there to validate it and all of the uh, uh, deployments to different um, environments. So you could have a deployment to dev, deployment to UAT, deployment to prod. And at any point, you know, you might have done one, two or all of those um, things. It's nice to see when you're looking at that one story, the whole um, the whole life cycle, rather than having to go to lots of different areas um you know you, you get that 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 single picture and i think that linkage between all those different things in the uh, the delivery uh life cycle um is is huge um to get that that level of visibility you go in the other way you also have the ability to group those user stories into a feature so you know if you're adding a new mm -hmm. feature into an existing product then you can group well okay adding that one button to carry out a particular action might only be one part you know that might lead to a 
a whole new form where you're capturing new information and so that could be you know a feature where you've got multiple user stories that you need to go through um, and then so just hopefully a feature is fairly obvious to people but what do you does an agile feature mean anything than just something the system can do that's something the uh, app can do or whatever you're working on it's not just just the interface it's it's anything where you need to carry out work on that on that solution so you know you could have a a feature which is implementing you know some of the elements that Gary's talked about for continuous deployment you know you could be building out you know the non-functional um requirements so that you've got actually you're still tracking a feature which is you know test the disaster recovery or you know test a particular scenario that's going to break your app um, you know it's not necessarily just adding a new capability into the app that an end user is going to have it might be an admin feature it might be a deployment feature it could be you know anything that you think of that's going to enhance it, the, the way is that it just app a grouping of stories what a feature yeah i think this, this so this is where i've seen a lot of a lot of different teams agree up front what their hierarchy is going to be and i think that's key is you know it's in the name agile it it means there is flexibility uh, and you can define what you're going to use and how you're going to use it you know it you've got you can roll features up into epics so if you think about where you might have a mobile app you might have a web-based interface those could be two epics which contain a set of features but actually are delivering a completely different interface you know so the way you group your stories into features and into epics depends also on what it is that you're actually doing so we you know we're talking a lot about developing an app developing a solution um, but it could be delivering a migration it could be carrying out a design exercise and and you know anything where you're tracking tasks and you need to group them together into hierarchical groups that give you more visibility of what you're doing that's really where whereas your boards can kick in um, so you know agile is born of code but actually you can manage quite a lot of quite a lot of different types of project using an agile methodology yeah i i think it's interesting as we've talked we've moved further away now from the delivery side of things which would be more you know necessarily stories and and tasks and bugs where it is the the things that you do as we're moving up the hierarchy if you like with features and then epics we're actually moving into um areas of product management yeah. in the, the the this is this is now the the business at the side of things this is the mm -hmm. okay well what do we need to deliver and why do we need to deliver it you know what value are we going to get out of this and you know you give an example there are my go-to example is usually an online banking right online banking is the epic and then a feature might be a current account and a story might be i want to be able to view my balance so i know that you know what money i've got and then yep. the task to deliver it and as you you know that online banking epic is a strategy right that is the that'll be the business strategy of you know we're going to put uh, a lot of investment into this online banking platform we don't know exactly what it's going to be end to end and all the features and we don't need to know at, at this moment in time but we do know there's going to be features that are going to be useful and that's going to be targeted at certain individuals or, or use cases and that's where we're going to get our requirements from but if you think from a delivery standpoint where you're working on a task that is you know part of that system and that's all linked together you're able to view all of the context of where that task has come from and you understand or hopefully you know that the context is is delivered <laughs> where it where it sits and why you're doing it and and you know you may be able to add extra value in there of of uh, you know some uh, insights that, that the work that you're doing Hang may on. not be seen by other you know Hang other so you're people. saying from this one system i can see a task being assigned to me i can see why i have to do it what i need to do i can see the tasks underneath that sorry i've got the story assigned to me i can see the tasks i need to do where i'm involved i can update that so i don't need to kind of tell other people it's done 
and I don't need to spend all day in meetings to do all this stuff. You can do. You, you by all means, you, you, if you yeah. want to, you can spend all day in meetings doing all of this stuff. Yeah, but, that's right. I'm saying I you, don't have to spend you don't, all day in you don't, meetings. You don't have yeah. to. That's that's your choice whether you want yeah. to stay in meetings. Or and I I think that is the magic that I love about DevOps. And I think Gary was talking about so, this story of going from the you know tracking off those tasks, that logging those bugs, seeing those bugs all the way up to the kind of the high level features, those high level epics, depending on where your interest is, there's ways you can go in and see the status of things that's all linked together. So those lower level elements build up to those those kind of top level um, views of things. And depending on where it is, whether you're down there at the I was about to say at the bottom, it sounds wrong, down there at the coalface, getting the work done. If you're up there kind of trying to see what the status is, you can get into that same content in different ways. So many, many years ago, using these, this type of approach, but with post-it notes, we used to actually put QR codes onto each post-it note had a big board and take a picture of it, upload Call it. Me that many would... years ago. <laughs> oh, it was, a, it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of years ago. It was a lot of far more years than I care to admit. But that was to be able to track it and to track and see where things are moving. And I think that's one of the the key elements of Azure Boards is you've got that data being tracked because that's key for you to measure how well you're progressing, how fast you're progressing, um, rather than just putting all those post-it notes up on a wall and going, OK, well, I'm, I'm not moving any of them. I can't see they're not moving. You can see you can highlight those. You can you can see that from different perspectives. Um, and as you have that hierarchy, you can see, OK, well, this feature is X percent done. These user stories, yeah, they're, they're getting stale. They haven't moved. But it allows you to work with your different teams who might be focusing on different features or different epics and to actually coordinate what they're doing as well. And I, I think yeah. my favorite DevOps stories, I think, Gary, you did it twice uh, back in the good old days when you're at CPS of kind of coming in and taking a project where the client wasn't feeling particularly engaged. They didn't know what's happening. There was a kind of fall apart of relationships um, because people did, didn't have that transparency. And what you did is put that into DevOps, gave them access to that, helped them understand through that. And that just built up the relationship. So it meant that at any point people would go and see what's happening. There was that transparency of what was going on. And I, I think that I, I'd be fairly sold on DevOps uh, a lot, but I think that sold a lot of people um, with the same thing as well. Yeah, I think that's that's the collaborative nature of, of working in DevOps um, in the, um, you know, you kind of mentioned, oh, we don't have to be in meetings. You know, meet, meetings have a place, right? They, yeah. they, they, it's not get rid of all of them. It's work out a way in that in that you you can Make use the efficient. tools to, to to benefit them. Yeah, um, and you know you've got a platform there in in, in DevOps where you're having conversations all the time. Uh, in you know at any delivery, are are we tracking things in a place that we can then you know take the just the idea, drop it in there, and then elaborate that to a point where actually you're in a position that over time you've just had some discussions, maybe that's just through the comment features, you know, you've not had to sit down and have a meeting, but you've worked out, okay, this is actually what you meant when you, you, you know, you made that comment and we, we created this idea and then, oh, actually, here's how we can do it. And then you start to have the discussion. Discussion becomes around just clarifying what you'd already discussed and you go, should we do it? Okay, great. And it's just a different way of doing it, um, and I think it, it, in some cases it's 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 nice. It's not like, okay, we've got half an hour just to decide this. It might be over the period of a couple of days, leading up to a meeting that you're just going to discuss it in, um, but you've already done the work. And I found that that's been really good and engaging and and you know open and transparent and and collaborative. And I think you know you have that, and and you're going to get good outcomes. I think. So one hopefully last question, um, because we're very good at selling all the lovely sides to this, um, but we know many organisations have DevOps and not everyone uses it. It kind of gets used a bit and disappears. Why, why isn't everyone doing this if it's so good, easy and worthwhile? Yeah, I have, I have a silence. theory. Culture. <laughs> Yes, culture. It, it, it's as with all of these tools, as with every tool, every change that we put in, 
it's understanding not only what the technology is there and able to offer but how you build that into the way people work the way we interact the way we collaborate and also practice you know to make sure that you've habits, got time yeah. to build those habits and to see the benefits and to learn as you go um you know because no change like this of putting devops in and starting to use it as a as a primary management tool you need to be able to showcase you know these are the best practices this is where it's worked um and have time to actually build those habits and build the the understanding that there is actual benefit there is the what's in it for me as a participant in this at all levels not just at the coalface de developing but designing planning all of those all of those participants need to be persuaded and bought in so it's a change exercise and, to change the culture you, you touch on the element time there it does take longer to do it this way and that the benefit of that is in that time you take to, to kind of write things down properly means you do it in a more um it was a word i'm looking for kind of planned and effective way because you spend the time kind of writing up as a blah blah i want to blah blah rather than just writing some code and getting on with it uh, and i think there is that habit of of i'm getting things done because i'm writing code or getting things done because i'm doing scripts or doing something versus writing it down so i think why doesn't it happen because people feel they're doing things by doing things which isn't always really the case so i think that's an interesting point in that it may be seen that planning is not work but what you find is necessarily in 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 this kind of you know way of working and and al's kind of you know hit correctly there with it about the culture it is you know working in a different a, a different way learning about how you can work better it's being able to experiment and go we're going to try this and see if it works and if it doesn't that's not a problem because you're going to learn something from it and then you'll you'll iterate again you'll get to a point where you'll be able to to to, to work more productively um but you're taking that that approach all the time and you know that's that's where the the culture comes in and that's a huge part of devops whether that is in code or it is planning or it is collaboration it is it, it is everything um but i think you you you're right kevin in that feels like it's more work but actually you're 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 just going about it in a more it, it, let's say a more more frequent um occurrences of, of of your planning right rather than trying to design up front and go this is what we think and then we're going to deliver it which we, we might have done and go away for three months and and, and design something and plan something in in this way you're planning up to a point and then you're delivering and then you're reflecting and then you're planning again so but that that's that's more an agile way of working necessary than the devops uh on the, which i think do it, do go hand in hand i think I the think, reason yeah. i say it's more work is uh, if if things go well if you write a bit of code and it just works it's quicker that way versus writing a user story working out what your success criteria is handing over some to be checked yeah. then getting that bit of code and going from there yeah. the the reality and, and that's why i say it's it's more work the reality is that over the longer term and time and time again the studies have proved that um you are more likely to get higher quality and therefore it's less work overall from that perspective because it yeah works I think this comes back to DevOps being, you know, the union of people and process, right? It's a yeah. team game. It's not an individual game. Yes, you can go and do that script and that's fine. But if no one else can understand what it's actually supposed to do and how you validate it as well, then, you know, you're opening yourself up there for, okay, well, we don't know what we're going to do going forward. How do we iterate this, this thing if we don't really understand it? And actually, was it needed in the first place? Um, you know, was there an alternative that actually if we have stopped and kind of thought about, you know, what we need to achieve, could there have been a different way rather than just going straight in and going, yeah, well, we're just, we'll just code something. So, you know, I think that's something to be said as well. I think the more you can get down and the more that you can share and communicate better within the team, 
and DevOps really helps you, like I said, through that whole business down to the delivery mm. team, all that context, the better the communication between the elements of the delivery, the better the quality will be. Um, and, and that is worth investing in, even if it feels like more work, uh, because everyone's going to benefit. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I I will stand fully correct on that. It feels like more work, I think, is the, uh, is the phrase I, I meant to use there um, from that one. Because it, it, it does. When you go from uh, kind of just getting on with things versus writing it down, it feels like more work. But I absolutely agree. It's your reality is no. You will save a lot of time in yeah. terms of yeah making making sure you've got that that planning in place. I mean that's that's key, isn't it? And I think that's it's not spending you're not spending more time doing things that you wouldn't have shouldn't have otherwise been doing. You should still have been planning it. It just focuses the mind on what you're actually trying to achieve. And I think try and try and build in. You know, we talked about habits. Try and build in all your processes around this. So we do have meetings. You know, you might have your stand up meetings. Don't just talk, show the cards. This is what I did yesterday. Yeah. Here it is. This is yeah. what I'm planning to do. Here it is. Um, that's how you build those habits in rather than if you just carry on talking and then everyone writes or the poor scrum master stroke project manager, uh, depending how you term them still, uh, is the one that does all the writing up. Things aren't really going to stick that well. So yeah, it, it's it's a tool at the end of the day, right? And you we use tools to facilitate, and that's the way that I I would look at that. And if that tool is not giving you the information that you need, then that should be something that you should address and maybe you know make a change to go. Okay, does does this reflect a whole real picture? If it doesn't, make a change, and that might be that you've simply just missed something something that everyone talks about and everyone knows but is not necessarily uh kind of visible um you bring you bring some light on that and you're able to then make some changes and that might be dramatic changes uh to the way that you're working which may speed up your whole delivery process or increase quality uh you know always be curious uh about your current state and, and changes that you can make um but yeah use use those to tools to to benefit uh, your uh, the, the ceremonies i guess that you're already doing so here's my uh awkward thought and i'm going to talk through a couple of bits but give you a little bit of chance to think about this because i didn't think about this earlier um we've just covered the the surface of azure devops you know we, we certainly haven't tested the the test plan where do people go to find out more um, from things so you know we, we've covered the work management and we've barely touched that as uh, at all I know I can go to dev.azure.com to as the kind of landing page um, do you have any recommendations of places to go I, th I think we'll put some in the show notes but is there anything that jumps out of uh, to either of you the phoenix project nope. um, so yeah I think it's good, a really good call uh, I'll put that in the show notes. Thank you. Uh, so for those, uh, we, we did talk about the Phoenix project and the Unicorn project back in show, I think it was 12. It was one of the early ones, our first book club um, from from last year. Um, and that really covers the, the DevOps rather than the Azure DevOps process. Um, definitely. Yeah, it's it's the story, right? It's the novel. It's the DevOps novel. Uh, it, yeah, it is. But I think it I think yes, it, it is covering the the code side, but it also covers you know the man the management. I think it's really yeah. hard to work out you know how do you break a a solution into user stories if you've never done it before. Yeah. Um, so that, are, it covers the DevOps, not the Azure DevOps side. I think. Yeah. The, I think the you know Azure DevOps trial and error more than anything else has got me an understanding of boards you know how you customize them how you customize the processes how you adapt them to different teams and different projects that you're running um it's quite an interesting challenge because it, it is culture you know how you define the information you need to capture on a card the processes that you're going to use the ceremonies that you're going to use the supports how you use the boards um is yeah, something that you're constantly evolving as you go through a project. 
Yeah, to, to add to that, I mean, Microsoft Learn is always a great resource. Um, there's learning paths on there um, for DevOps and Azure DevOps, bits of GitHub in there as well. Um, there's, oh, uh, yeah, now, we weren't going to mention GitHub. I can't we believe you threw I, that I, in. I, right I, I could, that might be I another not. show, so just pretend Gary didn't say yeah. that. Um, <laughs> there's also, um, you know, if you are really interested in doing it, um, getting into to DevOps and, and Azure DevOps, then there's the AZ400 exam. I'd take a look at that, look at the study guide, because that covers a lot of areas. Um, it covers boards, also goes into other areas as well. Repos and pipelines we've not talked about, but you know, there's other elements that uh, can, uh, uh, can be used uh, in Azure DevOps. Um, I, I definitely look at, at, at those two. And I think the only one I throw in, and I know we talked a little bit about at the uh, before the show, Gary, is the DevOps Dojo. Uh, I'll put a link to that uh, in the show notes. Yep. This is how, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is kind of how Microsoft does DevOps. It's the, the but it's not just Azure DevOps. It's the whole process, the culture that we've talked about so much in there. It talks about the different elements there, which is really nice, really good way of looking at it. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, we'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, there's a DevOps tax taxonomy that's been uh, defined, which basically, you know, has a holistic view of DevOps as a, uh, you know, a, 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 I guess a way of working um, and way of delivery. Um, you know, that, that's a great place to start um, because that also covers things like, you know, technology and culture. Um, quality as well as the you know the individual capabilities of things like we're talking about you know, as your boards it's very much in continuous planning and continuous collaboration uh, which uh, you know key capabilities of, of DevOps so um, yeah it, it, those are, are definitely things that you I'd recommend looking at. So just to make sure we don't follow up on uh, one of the ones that's missing in there of continuous talking, um, we probably should wrap up, but we will put some show notes. Uh, we'll put some things in the show notes at uh, greyhatbeard.com. So do do check some of those out and learn and uh, yeah, definitely check those out. Um, thank you very much. That was interesting and I think worked um, pretty well, uh, considering just before the show, we were kind of still trying to work out exactly what to cover, but uh, I, I really enjoyed that. And I hope hope others enjoyed it as well. Do do speak to us, especially Gary, um, if you have more questions on uh, Azure DevOps. And if you have that question of Azure DevOps versus GitHub, seeing as Gary's mentioned it, definitely ask him about which one you should look at um, from that. Uh, otherwise, it we'll depends. Be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> um, we will be back next week for all the latest news um, and hopefully have a guest if I can get off my backside and get this project out of the way and uh, get a bit back to planning. So we, we do have a few guests uh, kind of lined that, up, that, just haven't quite got to planning yet. So. Is that continuous planning or is that, that that's mm. not continuous planning, is it? Maybe maybe that is what we need. We need a DevOps board for Grey Hat Beard. That's not as stupid as idea as that sounds actually hmm, might think about that um but anyway do do come and join us find out in uh, a week or two weeks time to see if we have managed to get that uh, together otherwise thank you very much i've been gray i've been hat be beard see you next week bye bye bye
Thanks for listening to Grey Hat Beard Podcast. The song Drink Up My Mateys was brought to you by Black Bones under a non-commercial attribution license.